Welcome to Visa Spotlight, a podcast by Visa that shines a light on the most exciting developments in the payments landscape right now, while also giving you a glimpse into what the future holds for us all. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Visa Spotlight's podcast series. So far in this series, um, we've spent a lot of time looking at the many different ways in which consumers are spending money either face-to-face or online, and the digital payments that are supporting that. When many of us think about digital payments, we often think about perhaps the card in our wallet or the digital credential within our phone. But all of that can only be enabled and is only possible due to a growing and expanding acceptance network around the world. Visa has more than 130 million merchant locations worldwide. And whether it's a large airline, a large e-commerce store, or a small souk, such as the one where we're based today, uh, more and more merchants are finding the benefits of digital payments within their business. I'm joined today by Michael Berner, um, Visa's Senior Vice President for Merchant Sales and Acquiring for our Samir region, and we'll explore some of the trends within acceptance and also a fascinating report that we've recently launched. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Excellent. So, Michael, I sort of gave a bit of an introduction to the scene. Perhaps you could talk a little around in terms of your role and why acceptance is so important within the digital payments world. Sure. My role in, uh, in Visa Simia is basically defining and driving the execution of the strategy for acceptance. That means that we are working with multiple partners in order to increase the acceptance footprint and make sure that merchants are getting state-of-the-art solutions for accepting digital payments. Because exactly as you just said, acceptance is very much core, very much in the essence of what we do in Visa. Without acceptance, it's very hard to facilitate payments. If there are no payments, there is no commerce. Mm. So acceptance plays a a very, very important role for us. And we at uh, Merchant and Acquiring uh, try to do everything what is possible to grow acceptance in CME and take it to the whole next level from technology perspective, from client experience perspective, providing the best possible innovations there. Fantastic. So I mentioned there's 130 million uh, merchants worldwide that currently accept um, Visa cards. Um, Could you perhaps give me a bit of context in terms of what that landscape looks like within the SMEA region and also the growth journey that we're on there. Sure. SMEA is the fastest growing region in Visa and uh, probably one of the most diverse. So we pay very significant attention to the growth of our acceptance locations and we demonstrated pretty good dynamics here. We started with just over 3 million locations back in 2018, which is six years back. And last year we crossed the mark of 12 million which is representing basically fourfold growth, which is uh, something we feel very proud of. But we did not stop there. Simia represents a major opportunity. And based on our assessment, there are 60 million merchants which are not accepting digital payments now. So as a part of our strategy, and this is a very important part of the strategy, we work on enabling the 60 million merchants with the capabilities to accept digital payments all over the 88 markets of Simia. Fantastic. And those numbers really do um, reflect the sort of tremendous growth that we're seeing. Visa's obviously been present, as you know, in Samia for five decades or so, and that 3 million growth within that period to suddenly go to 12 million um, within the last five years highlights the the growth pathway that we're on. Um, One of the other drivers behind the growth of digital payments has obviously been shifting consumer expectations. Um, We recently undertook a report and research with uh, payments to look at the rise of the click and mortar shopper. Um, Could you give me a bit of a sense for the report and what we looked at there? The commerce is rapidly changing and uh, we see that the consumer uh, behavior and the habits are changing very quickly as well. So we have done recently a a very interesting piece of research, which is covering uh, 17,000 consumers across seven countries including uh, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, UK, US, Brazil, India, and Mexico. And uh, it demonstrated that there is a new paradigm in the way people shop. So the time when people were going shopping is um, actually no longer there for a significant proportion of the, of the consumers. They shop uh, all the time. They, they browse web pages and they shop. They uh, travel, they shop. They do something very different in social media and they shop. 
So with that, we see the emergence of this segment of uh, something what we call click and mortar. When consumers are using the omni-channel functionality, which many merchants have, in order to order something online and uh, get that in store, or actually go to the store, look at the goods physically, touch them, wear them if there's clothes, and then order them and deliver them home because that's easier for them. So we see that the multiple variations are emerging now and the number of people who are using this model of shopping is changing, is growing. So we see that 39% of uh, modern shoppers actually use this model. They are brick and mortar shoppers. They use the best of combination of online and physical locations. But in the markets where we operate in Simia, in Saudi Arabia, in the UAE, this proportion is even higher. So for example, we see that in Saudi Arabia, the proportion of these clients is actually 55%, which is 16% higher than the global average. Yeah, it's a fascinating area because I think when the pandemic um, was at its height, um, there was predictions that everything was sort of going to move online and e-commerce obviously grew when um, shops were closed and consumers had to stay at home. But I think what the report clearly shows is that there's a real blend now. It's sort of bringing the best of face-to-face -face retail and the best of e-commerce and having that blended experience in there. Absolutely. So we see that people are using new technology and embracing the new technology and our recommendation to merchants to make sure that they are ahead of this trend. Great. Because if you are only at physical or if you're only in online, you may lose something. You may lose some clientele. And the clientele, which is brick and mortar, represent that segment, is actually spending more. Uh, they are more loyal and uh, uh, they are more advanced. So the loyalty and the revenue from this segment would be only growing uh, for the merchants. So our recommendation to uh, everyone in the market is to embrace uh, the new model, make sure that you're fully geared up, you have the capabilities, your website is fully optimized for that, you have a mobile application, you have a mobile version of the site, and that actually involves quite a significant investment in technology, but that would be paid back. Because as I said, these clients tend to spend more, they buy more frequently, they buy more expensive items, and at the end of the day, they would be providing the future of commerce. Excellent. Well, we certainly live in a new era here. Um, perhaps you could talk a little more on some of the other technologies that you see really sort of shaping um, the, the growth and expansion of um, acceptance across the region. One of these technology is Teptophone. In my view, this is absolutely a revolutionary uh, technology which came up mm. uh, about 18, 24 months back. And basically what it is, is converting any connected mobile phone with NFC capability, and most of the mobile phones now in Simia have NFC capability, to an acceptance device. And that creates a whole unique opportunity for the smaller merchants for something what we call micro and nano to go into the world of digital payments and accept digital payments. Because in the past, getting the physical terminal typically represent the cost. This cost could be absorbed either by the bank acquirer or by the merchant. And typically for the micro and nano merchants, this cost is too high to make things work. Mm. So converting the mobile phone, which every shop owner or the, or the salesperson there would have, to an acceptance device solves for this problem. And we see that the amount of uh, tap-to-phone devices, basically phones which are connected to tap-to-phone functionality, is growing and is growing very, very rapidly. In Simia, we are ahead of the trend. Many of our markets are already fully equipped with this technology, and the number of partners who are providing this technology to merchants is growing. But overall, in the world, we're in more than 100 countries uh, accepted and adopted this technology uh, and, and taking that forward. Yeah. I think Tabs Phone is probably one of my favorite uh, Visa products just because of the simplicity and the ease and the fact it does give that acceptance device to anyone wherever they are through the device that's already in their hands or in their pockets. Um, you spoke earlier around the 60 million uh, formal merchants that don't currently accept digital payments. There's obviously another 60 million informal merchants, which may be even smaller. And I know one of the areas that we're also very focused on is bringing some of that tap-to-phone technology to feature phones to enable some um, 
non-smartphone devices to also accept payments um, in many of the markets in which we operate across Samir. So together, that's almost 120 million um, sellers and untapped opportunity, quite literally, um, within Samir. Could you talk a bit more in terms of how you're seeing the shift in the seller landscape um, and the concept of billions of sellers and how that's growing? With 120 million merchants, 60 formal and uh, as you mentioned, 60 informal, which is probably even smaller in size now, uh, we have to come with the technology which would be affordable, at the same time very reliable, and at the same time provide the security which is very much required uh, when we talk about payments because security gives confidence. So we and Visa work on a number of new solutions, including the one which we call a solution for a billion merchants because everyone who is in uh, social media now uh, selling something, and it could be very small or it could be relatively large, needs a tool to accept payments. So Visa currently work on the solution which would convert pretty much every seller to a merchant and uh, everyone would be enabled to accept digital payments. So just watch the space. Uh, this is something that is uh, being in works, it is coming, and we will be bringing this up to the markets. Excellent. So we've covered some innovative technologies that are helping that sort of face-to-face -face, um, sales opportunity for many of the small merchants. And um, one of the trends that we also see across our region is many of these small businesses are looking to move online and set up e-commerce uh, sort of storefronts um, to support their existing business as well. Um, could you talk a little around that trend and uh, the way in which we're sort of helping that opportunity be captured? Definitely. We see actually many merchants who were traditionally offline looking now at providing their offering online as well. And for that, they need platform. Uh, so we look at partnerships around the, around the region in order to provide this sort of experience. And uh, one of the good examples is Little Fish, uh, a fintech in South Africa. This is an amazing group of people and a uh, pleasure to partner with them. So Little Fish is uh, providing a one-stop solution for the small and medium enterprises who are just entering the online uh, market. So this is a platform which um, uh, helps to uh, manage sales operations, uh, stock management, uh, make sure that the loyalty program which particular merchant would like to implement is very seamless, working well, aggregates all the purchases to get the volume discount, and at the end provide payments. So we partner with Little Fish in order to expand the availability of this platform to small and medium enterprises across uh, Africa. And uh, uh, we help Little Fish to access new markets and new merchants. Another good example of something what we developed in partnership with uh, USAID, our long-term partner across the world, is uh, e-com in a box solution in Georgia. Uh, this is basically addressing similar need of merchants who are entering online world, but for whatever reason, they are a little afraid to invest. They don't really know well this part of, uh, of the business and uh, they would like to rely on a partner who would guide them and bring them to the solutions they would be benefiting from. So together with USAID and also our partners, uh, Bank of Georgia, uh, Liberty and uh, TBC Bank, uh, we developed a platform which provides uh, a chance for the uh, merchant who is just starting their online journey to get everything in one go. They don't need to invest, they don't need to develop anything, so they're getting access to the platform straight away. And what we see is that there is a pretty significant level of adoption. Uh, many merchants, uh, small or medium size, went and getting the benefits of the platform. And once they started seeing the advantages of the platform, they stay in the platform. So we're pretty happy with the, with the way of uh, uh, adoption is, uh, is growing in Georgia and uh, planning to take similar type of solutions to other markets as well. Excellent. Well, thank you, Michael. We've covered a lot of ground today. It's clearly lots of growth lots of future opportunity and many uh, products and solutions that we're developing to be able to support uh, the growth of merchants, big and small. So thank you. Um, I'm sure many of our listeners will be interested in the report that you spoke around earlier. Um, where can they find it? Definitely. I think this is a fascinating report and I would highly recommend everyone to go and, and browse through. You can find it at visa.com forward slash acceptance solutions, or we will put a link also at the comments to this podcast. Fantastic. And we'll have another conversation soon, I'm sure, to hear about the continued progress in that acceptance journey across Samir. So thank you, Michael. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much once again for joining today. Hope you enjoyed the conversation and hearing more about the exciting world of acceptance across Central and Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa. See you next time.